Um, this is the finance committee meeting for February 16th, 2021, starting at 6 p.m. And we are going to end before 7 p.m. because we lose our Zoom at 7 p.m. So we have a hard stop tonight. Um, I wanted actually just quickly to go around and do introductions. Um, Jim, you were with us last week, but everybody else in the world was with us too. So just so you can put sort of faces with names for the finance committee members. Um, and if, I don't know, if you can just say like who you are and what your town involvement is, how about that? So I'll start, I'm Julie Chalfant. I am the brand new chair of finance committee starting last week. Um, I'm also chair of the building town building advisory committee. And as part of finance committee, I sit in on the sewer. I don't know the official title, but the committee that oversees the sewer. Um, the new, the new construction sewer stuff. Um, how about John? I'm John Pereski. I've been on the finance committee for quite a few years now. I used to be on capital improvement planning and I was able to get off that. Now um, um, the finance committee has a representative that goes to the personnel board and I'm the finance committee's person that represents the finance committee with the personnel board. And I'm a taxpayer. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> Allison? I'm Allie Vandervelden. Allison's fine too. Um, I am only on the finance committee. That's my only committee service. Now I started out, um, I did serve on the capital improvement planning committee a few years ago. So, and I'm the clerk, so. If I ask you to slow down and say it again, it's so that I can write it down. Jeff? Jeff Upton, and I sit on the Finance Committee, have for, I think it's five, six years now, and also the Capital Improvement Committee for five, six years, been attending uh, town meetings for several years, and, uh, just trying to help out the best I can with the town and direction of where the town is heading. Thanks. Um, John, the other John? John Pachurik. Yes, please. Yes. I, uh, uh, first of all, uh, if you see my name listed on there, it's a wrong name because I didn't put in my last name and for some reason Zoom would not let me correct it. So I put in Pavilion G6, which is my computer name. <laughs> so anyway, I've been on finance for several years now. I don't keep track of that. Before that, uh, I had a one or two year break. Before that, I had 18 years as a selectman for the town of Deerfield. Uh, I'm a retired electrical contractor, retired military man. I'm also on the uh, DEDIC committee and I'm currently the chairman of that. And other than that, uh, I was on the sewer advisory committee at one time before I found that uh, the selectmen did not want to take any of our recommendations. So we all got off of it because of that. Other than that, uh, I'm just uh, an elder gentleman in the town of Deerfield that wants to do a good job for the town. Thanks. James? I'm Jim Cambius. Um, I'm a Deerfield resident for 18 years now, uh, 19 years. Um, I'm on the library board uh, now and I'm gathering signatures for re-election. Um, and um, uh, I'm a writer when I'm not uh, doing this stuff. Oh, and I'm on the uh, fundraising committee for the 350th. Know that. Um, Brenda? I'm uh, the town accountant, and I've been in this position a little over seven years. Um, previous to that, I was in uh, South Dakota uh, running the, uh, his, uh, the um, educational bookstores at Mount Rushmore. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. Casey? 
I talk to myself, so I tend to mute myself when I can. Um, I'm Casey, I'm the town administrator. Um, back after a few years away, because uh, I worked here for like 17 years, between 99 and 2016. So I'm relearning how you guys are working on um, budget prep and stuff and trying to get myself educated using everybody's input and very much Brenda's. So. And Allie, this is recorded. So if you have questions, um, the recording should go up within 24 hours, which is the requirement. I have no intention, just put it out there, of watching the recording. If I don't get it, <laughs> real time, it's not getting in the minutes. <laughs> once is enough. Huh? Like yeah, yeah, once is good. Um, I know. Yeah, Jack, I do that. 24 hours is way past when she has her minutes done. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her minutes are done like that. Well, if it doesn't happen tonight, it's never happening because I have okay. other things I have to do tomorrow. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> All right. And Alex. Uh, hi, my name is Alex Hirschenreiter. Um, I am a student at UMass. Um, I'm study, uh, studying uh, regional planning. I'm working towards my master's degree. Um, and I've been helping the town do odds and ends um, to, was it two years now? Um, yeah, I think so. So what, so I'm on, I'm an alternate on the zoning board and I am also on the board of registrars. Um, and you'll see me a lot because I'll be um, hosting the moderating meeting, the meetings, moderating the meetings and making sure they're recorded so people can do minutes. He, unlike me, does not forget to hit record. <laughs> and we thank him for that. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, so first item on our agenda is to review and approve the previous minutes. Allison, do you want to say anything? Um, just that there was, I received just a couple notes about attendance that I will update, um, but I didn't get any other feedback after I sent it out. So if there's anything else to change, um, I'll only make the notes, just fixing names and things like that. I think I got Jim's name wrong and a couple things like that. All right, so do we have a, can we go ahead and approve them? I'll make a motion to uh, accept and uh, approve the minutes from our last meeting. Second, John Pachark. All right, any discussion? All in favor, we'll do a roll call. Julie Chalfont, aye. John Pareski, aye. James Cambius, aye. John Pupkins, aye. Austin Vandervelden, aye. John Pachurik, aye. All right, that's unanimous. Um, I talked to Brenda uh, last week for a while and I asked her to spend just a couple minutes telling everybody what she told me, um, which is sort of a, a quick update. We all have the financial reports from January and also an overview of where she feels the budget is going this year. Um, is that a fair assessment? <laughs> um, so did all of you get a chance to look at your January reports? Jim, I don't think I sent any to you. It's okay. Uh, if, if, if you have an email version, I can look at it right now. Um, I saw them in email. You know what, there's separate reports on my, I'll send them to you later if that's all right. Sure. Um, <clears throat> did any of you get a chance to look at the revenues? Yes, I did. Jeff okay. Upton did. So, I think you can see the revenues seem to be tracking pretty well with what we were uh, expecting for this year. Yes, we budgeted uh, very conservatively, especially with uh, motor vehicle excise. Um, oh shoot, what are some other ones that we, uh, inspections, um, uh, of course, investment, income, you know, things like that. We really, really ratcheted down the budget, but it seems like um, it's tracking pretty well. Even our tax receipts, um, maybe we didn't collect quite as many as we would normally by this time 
uh, in, a, in any given year, but it's pretty close. There isn't a, a big difference there. So um, that seems promising. Um, Julie, if I miss anything from what we talked about the other day, let me know. Um, as far as budgets go, uh, I get a little anxious thinking about the numbers. Um, I think the state is going to come through with some with some increases this year. They've talked about that. They've talked about 3.5%. Um, I haven't actually looked at the governor's proposal yet, but that's my next my next uh, thing to do before the next meeting is to look at the revenues and see uh, what where we want to be there. But um, the, let's let's just give you a, for instance the police. Uh, because of the um, the the um, what, what Governor Baker uh, put into law here recently, um, it's going to eliminate any chances for the police department to continue to hire part-time people. So um, those that are part-time now are grandfathered in, but anybody else is going to have to be hired as a full-time employee. So you'll see when we get to the police budget. And, and you've got that in your packet already, they had to add another full-time policeman to their roles. Um, and I'm sure that that's just going to increase. There's going to be probably next year, there's going to be another increase by another full-time employee. Um, the schools, I don't know, Casey, you could probably speak to the schools better, but um, word, word is, uh, we're looking at a, in a maybe six to eight percent increase. Uh, I don't know if it's just for Frontier. I don't know if we're talking about Deerfield Elementary or both. Um, I don't know what we're going to see for Franklin Tech because that's all based on how many students we have there. Um, but the other two are looking at some pretty hefty increases to cover, um, to cover the things that, that they've got coming up. Um, so none of you have a, a summary sheet yet. I do have most budgets in, um, but there are a few that a few stragglers and including debt. I, I have, we've plugged in some debt figures uh, based on some assumptions, but we don't have that all complete. So that is one thing that didn't get printed for your, for your, um, for your binders. Um, there are some budgets that are, you know, pretty comparable to last year. There's some pretty simple budgets that I've laid out as uh, options to uh, go over and hopefully approve tonight uh, before our meeting is over with. Um, you know, those are the simple things like the Conservation Commission, the ZBA, you know, energy, you know, things like that. I don't know, Casey, did you want to add anything to that? I was just going to say that one of the things that the school is experiencing, and we'll get more information on this, but Darius did warn us that he may not have a final budget by March 31st, which is the statutory requirement, um, because they are still figuring out revenue streams and state aid. So he asked us, we had a meeting with him as town administrators. And one thing he said was because there's such a high use of their revenue side, not necessarily appropriations, but revenues to meet the needs of some of these COVID requirements. Their revenues may not bounce back. They may not have the revenue that they normally would expect to. So I think we're gonna see some creative um, budgeting and by creative, I mean, they're trying to find ways to not only lower the numbers but still meet the service needs and take into account the revenue streams that they normally would use for other functions they may not use those to buy supplies they might use it for strictly for school choice type things but he did warn us all the town administrators that it's going to be a difficult budget year and not necessarily every town is going to same face the same percentages Deerfield's percentages are going to be a little bit higher um and i think I think Sunderland as well, but don't quote me. It might have been Conway. Um, so I think we can just expect to see 
some changes, but we'll also have the school formula. The Student Opportunity Act goes into effect this year. So the school formulas are gonna morph a little bit. Okay. I did see uh, their excess and deficiency come through today and there was no extra for them to uh, use towards their budget. I did see that that was, um, yeah. that was disappointing, but. And I forwarded it out to both capital and the finance committee. The E and D. Yeah, I saw the email come in. All right. That, so is that a normal number, Brenda? Because I don't know what they normally look like now. You know, it seems like they usually have a hundred or two hundred thousand uh, more that they can that they have to use um, towards their budget. This year they have nothing. Sorry, Julie. No, that's that's helpful. <laughs> so it's going to be a tough budget year. It sounds like which is not entirely unexpected. Um, all right, so does anybody have any questions about any of that? If not, we will just proceed into some of the easier budgets to get through. Yeah. All right, um, Brenda, you sent a list. Do you wanna just start running us through those? I did, and actually I'm going to try to share my screen so you can actually see the report because I've highlighted in yellow the budgets that I think we could go through tonight. So let's see how this works. Would you mind when you pick a budget just saying the number so I can document it and find it? Say, say the number? Yeah, because I've got the list you sent, but I just want to make sure I'm, I'm writing down the right. Oh, got it. Okay, can you see my screen? I can, yep. Great. So uh, the first one is the moderator. Um, you know, that's been pretty much the same for the last, uh, you know, umpteen years. And that, that uh, account number is 114-5100. So that should be the first one in your budget books. Um, we generally budget $300 for the annual meeting and $50 for each of the special meetings for him. And so we usually anticipate that there could be up to two special meetings in a given year. So that budget is set at 400. Um, he's agreed to that. I thought that would be one that we could um, to, uh, get approved tonight. I'll make a motion, make a motion. Make a motion to approve that. Got that motion? Is that John? Petrarch? John second. And then who is the second? John Pereski seconds it. Great. Any discussion? All in favor? Julie, aye. But aye. John, John Pereski, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. aye. Allison Vandervelde, and I. I don't know if you got John Pereski, Allison. I, As a, I uh, yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Any opposed? Oh, I think we already went through that. So that carries. How many of us are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six. Six zero zero. I'm going to write our names down and then. Um, I'm going to call on you and you're going to say I or nay, and that way we can just whip through everybody. Call Julie. All right. Um, yeah, we're missing Skip tonight. Okay. We are missing Skip. Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear you. Missing Skip. Yeah. yeah. All right. The next one would be the select board salaries, and that's 122 5100. Make a motion we approve that. Who was that? John, John Pereski. We have a second. John Pereski seconds 122.5100 for 16,000. Okay, which has been the same for years and years. Any discussion? No, Julie Chalfant died. Jack Pachurk? Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Yeah, aye. Allison Vanderbilt. Aye. John Pereski. Aye. That's everybody. So that's six zero zero. Okay. All right. Um, 
I've skipped over some of the rest of these. Uh, one of them that we could have uh, approved tonight would have been the finance committee, but I really didn't get an idea as to whether the $500 that we've been uh, allotting for you these last few years would be sufficient for the whole group. I don't know, Julie, if you wanted to take a vote on that and then we, we could approve that one too. That wasn't on your list. Um, sure. The motion that we approve the $500 for finance committee. I'll second it, Jeff Upton. All right. The $500 finance committee. So other than the 175 for the ATFC dues, what else do we spend? If you go to conferences, um, sometimes they have some specific conferences for finance committees. Okay. Um, you know, particularly if you have a new member that needs to learn, you know, what it's all about. Um, you might spend money on that. I know one year, I think Allison went and somebody else. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, anybody have anything? Are there likely to be any conferences at all this year? I would say if there are, they're going to be virtual. So at least you wouldn't have to travel anywhere, but there'd probably be a fee right. to, to participate. To attend. I think we're... I, I don't know, is it worth discussing dropping it a couple hundred bucks? It may not be worth the time to discuss it. Not even worth it. You want to save money. Let's go after the big ticket items. Okay. No argument. I agree. And we might want to go. I might be interested in doing that. And Jim may, and if there is an availability for something to do. So, um, all right. Any further discussion? Um, this finance committee is 131500. Yes. Uh, yes, sorry. Yes, correct. And then I have a motion with John Petork and a second. Was that uh, John Pareski or was it Jeff? No. Jeff Upton. Jeff Upton? Yep. Correct. All right. Ready for a vote? Julie Chalfin, aye. Jack Petork? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. Don Pareski. Aye. That's all of us. Okay. Okay. What's next? All right. So then uh, the next one on my list, I figured we could skip over um, Casey's budgets because we would probably do most of those in one night. Uh, obviously, Barb's the treasurer clerk. Uh, budgets, we do those in one night. Yep. Um, I skipped over personnel because I think, Casey, you were trying to get uh, uh, a decision on whether they wanted to do something different with their budget this year. Yes. Okay. And IT hardware, I just wasn't sure. That was still one of your budgets, so I left that one off. So um, the next one on my list is 155-5800. And that's PEG access. So that budget is dictated to us by the money that we received. It has to be used for capital uh, by FCAT for various things that they need, various equipment items. Um, so we received the money in the previous year. We budget for it the following year. So it is $4,000. That's a given. Make a motion. We approve that. I'll second it. Upton on the PEG access capital, 155.5800 for a total of $4,000. Any discussion? Yes. Question? Mm -hmm. On the financial statements for that account, it shows 63,962 carried forward. That's correct. What is that's that money? How much, that's how much money we've received um, according to the contract that they still haven't spent. So some of it was last year and some of it was the year before? And some of it the year before and some of it the year before. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of like a, it's in a way, like a special revenue fund, the way it's being treated, right? Um, in a sense? At, at one point in time, it was a special revenue fund, but DOR uh, 
decided they didn't want it handled that way anymore. So either you had to set it up as an enterprise fund or you take it into the general fund. And at the time, uh, Doug Finn was our town administrator and he decided to take it into the general fund. So, so now we're kind of stuck with, with the capital part of it just being an appropriation that we just carry forward until they use the money. So it's a separate approach appropriation at the town meeting? Yes. Well, it's it's within our omnibus budget. I guess I'm, I'm. Where is the legality of carrying it forward? Why doesn't question? Why doesn't it go back to free cash? Because it's because not it our money to, be... to spend. It's 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 money that belongs to FCAT to spend. Money that we have to spend on FCAT. When you sign a contract, usually it's a ten-year contract. You get like 50 or 60,000 up front, and then you get so many thousand per year. Now this yeah. is just their payment that they make to us for capital improvements. So for example, we can turn around and say, get off of the 720 system and go on to the 1080 system or to go to 4,000 K, whatever they have to do to upgrade their transmissions. or to buy microphones or to buy new cameras, whatever it is that, that they need. Um, I know we, Casey, I know has been encouraging them to get certain things and, and uh, it just hasn't been pursued on their end yet, right? Correct. Okay, I guess. I <laughs> So can they spend $6,300 since that's there, or can they only spend 4,000 this year since we've said 4,000? There's there's a carry forward, um, if John says it's 63,000. Oh, okay. So there's 63,000 that's carried forward and right now we're allocating another 4,000 to add to that. Um, just, just so you're aware in this fiscal year, um, there were some things that we purchased in order to have remote meetings and Casey did um, encourage, or I should say, um, she talked to Chris and <laughs> they agreed that he- find a diplomatic way to say that, Brenda. <laughs> yeah. Um, he agreed to take on part of that cost. So instead of uh, uh, charging the COVID account or the CARES account for that, he did take some of that on and apply it against his capital. And those capital items will help FCAT um, in their operational responsibilities. So it, it was a win-win for both sides because it was additional um, equipment that we both could use. And it just so happened that it, it came at a time when we really needed other pieces of equipment, tech I mean, to assist with our remote participation efforts. While we're talking about FCAT, should we have contacted them to whatever broadcast this while we were in meeting? They see the notices, Julie. Um, okay. They don't. So, they so don't push out every single meeting. So if you want them to specifically push your meetings out, we can arrange that with them. What we do with the recordings, though, is we're required by law to throw them up online within. 24 hours. So it actually goes through the town's YouTube channel. Okay. I'm not worried about it, but unless you think we need a to. suggestion for some of that money mm -hmm. would, be, would be a new sound system for the town hall. I've heard several complaints about uh, people not yeah. being able to understand what's being said in town meetings within the town hall. Just a thought. Thanks, that Jeff. I can pass that along. Yeah, I think that's been brought up a number of times, yes. All right, any further discussion on this one? Okay, um, we'll do our roll call. Julie Chelfin, aye. Jack Paturk. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Allie Vanderbelden. Hi. John Pareski. Hi. All right.
What's next? So the next one is Conservation Commission. I'll move, John Fitchurk. Second. It's $700. All right, any discussion? No, roll call. Julie Chalfin, aye. Jack Pachurik. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Allie Vandervelden. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. All right. If I remember right, Casey, this was a budget you and I put together because uh, we didn't really have a chair of the committee at the, at the time. Correct. All right, um, ZBA, this one has been set at a thousand. Um, you'll see from this year that they've already overspent their appropriation. There have been many, many, many mailings. And so um, in the year when they have lots of mailings, they're gonna overspend their appropriation. It seems like in a couple of years, we've had to go to the reserve fund. So last year we decided to just go ahead and fund them at $1,000 a year, um, hoping that in most years that would cover it. They have a problem, finance committee can come back and give them more later. So I make a motion we approve this for $1,000. I'll second it, Jeff Upton, uh, for the Zoning Board of Appeals for $1,000. Dollars account number one seventy six fifty four hundred. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Any discussion? All right. Roll call vote. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Ali Vandervelden. Aye. John Pareski. Yes. Okay. Just for a little variety. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So the next one is uh, account number 179-5400. Agricultural Commission. Make a motion. We approve this as. Jeff Upton, I'll second it. Uh, Agricultural Commission for $100. Account number being 179-5400. All right, any discussion? Uh, I do have a question. Um, it seems like, uh, was that a recent establishment or? No, uh, but we do budget for it every year just in case. Um, you have to have an appropriation at least a, a dollar or more in order to be able to even spend any money out of it. So. It's just been set at a hundred. We've never spent anything in, in the time that I've been here. But. <laughs> it's a placeholder. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Question? Yep. Yeah. Why, why doesn't the hundred dollars show in earlier years on your summary sheet? Uh, because there was nothing spent. You'll see fisc fiscal year. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Yeah. Yep. Is, is the appropriation because we haven't completed this year, so I can't never give mind. Just regard my st stupid point. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? All right. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Paturic, aye. Jim Cambius, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Allison Vandervelden, aye. John Pareski, aye. All right. What's next? Energy Committee. The next one is 182-5400 uh, Energy Committee. Make a motion we approve this. Jeff Upton will second the Energy Committee for $1,000. Any discussion? They haven't spent much, are they? Um... No, I wondered if somebody would bring that up. David, every year he says, well, we'd like to do some mailings. We'd like to do some mailings. And, and they did the one year, but it seems like they have good intentions that don't happen. But 
he said, I, I want to leave it at a thousand in case we get that done this year. <laughs> I actually saw a draft newsletter just the other day. Okay, great. Yes, great. Julie, you did. Because they're with the municipal aggregation, they're starting to push more information out and they decided to do it. They decided to do it in the form of a newsletter. So yes, we may see some mailing costs on the form. Great. Okay. All right. Good. We discussed. Any other discussion? No. Roll call. Julie Chalfant, aye. John Paturic. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. All right. Six zero zero. Okay. Next. Um, the next one, I know even though Casey usually puts this budget together, it's kind of a general budget. I thought we could approve this one. It's 196-5400 general insurance. Um, we did budget 55,000 for fiscal year 21, but we've overspent that account uh, by a couple thousand dollars, which we'll need a reserve fund transfer, just have not done that yet. Um, so we decided to budget a couple thousand more to cover anything that we might be missing. You know what caused it to go up in 21? Because it was well, at 48-ish. Uh, part of it was the EMS building. Um, Casey, maybe you can speak to it. I know they updated a lot of, uh, a lot of things that, that had been out of date, uh, equipment that shouldn't have been on there, new equipment that had to be put on. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, Casey, do you? Yeah, so I did have, every year we have a meeting with the insurance company and we go over some of the increases and decreases. Sometimes we have workers comp, um, what do they do? What do they call that, Brenda, where they do the evaluation and well, if your workers comp claims are low, sometimes they don't charge you, other times they charge you more. Well, that's, that's a workers' comp audit, and that would be covered under the workers' comp expense account, so that doesn't, doesn't get covered under general insurance. Okay. Yeah. We used to comply, we used to pull all that together in Asheville. See what I mean? Oh. Learning. Um, but in the case she met, in the case of Brenda mentioning the South County EMS building, so we took that building on, it had an effect on the insurance costs. But during the year, we do audits on the number of vehicles, um, because things go on and come off and that costs money or saves money, depending on what it is you're buying. Um, the only other thing I can think of is, and we didn't specifically talk about it in the insurance audit review, but there may have been costs related to cybersecurity. They just added cybersecurity as a Yes. as a coverage option for towns. And one of the reasons they did that is because cybersecurity claims have increased over 40% in the last two years. And those are claims that are related to different types of hacks, ransomware, that sort of thing. So we do have the coverage. It isn't costing us a huge amount, but that you know did come on board in the last two years. You know what else went up, Casey, um, is the police... Um, oh, what's that called? Oh, um, 111F, the injured on duty. Yes, that one okay. went up quite a bit. Yeah, I didn't ask him about IOD because I think he, he had talked to John about it. Okay. okay, thank you. I didn't realize. I apologize. We started discussing before we have a motion, I think. I like make a motion that we approve general insurance for sixty thousand. I'll second a motion for general insurance account number one ninety six fifty four hundred for sixty thousand. Jeff Upton. All right. Any further discussion? I have some questions. Go ahead. Does the uh, we does this number include the EMS vehicles? No, the EMS vehicles are in their budget. Does this number include the sewer plant buildings or facilities? Uh, oh boy. I, I, don't, I my, don't remember for sure, John. My opinion, it shouldn't. 
I think I think that is separated out too, but I'd have to take I'd have to look. Um, nothing I can do right now while I'm sharing my screen. <laughs> I think before we vote on it, we should know that unless I think it should not include the sewer buildings. I don't know if the rest of the committee agrees with me or not, but that's not an issue that would keep me from voting on this item. Um, but if the others would like to wait to have more information, that's fine. Why don't we just but put why this... should the taxpayers pay for the sewer building if then you know what? Let me let me take a quick look. Uh, if you can bear with me, well, uh, my screen's gonna change, but I'm gonna look real quick. In, um, in the uh, software program, I'm pretty sure Anna Lee has her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Anna Lee. Hey. Emily Wolf Cole, I'm chair of the planning board. Um, while Brenda's looking there, um, I was under the impression from the select board that the public can attend these finance committee meetings and ask yeah, all the meetings are open. And we can ask questions also. Um sure. Go ahead. Okay. And then you can how ask questions when the chairman says you can ask them. Yeah, so we don't have procedurally you know, usually what you do is you allow a certain amount of time for the people to ask questions as long as they don't interrupt too much. So on each on any budget, if we were to raise our hand and the chair could um, recognize. Right. Okay. And then how would we know which budgets are being presented at the um, at certain meetings? That's a million dollar question um, because often we find, you know, Brenda's working on it behind the scenes. And so she'll often send, like today she sent Julie and I a list of budgets that she thought would be ready for today because I'm taking the minutes and Julie's the chair. Um, so we don't often have all that information ahead of time. The finance committee does receive a budget book that Brenda puts together with printouts of all the budgets, but they're not all done yet and they often get replaced um, as they get updated throughout the budget season. Okay, so we would just show up and if we're interested. Okay, yeah, it, it's, yeah. Unfortunately, it's harder to prepare um, for those specific budgets. Sometimes we'll know ahead of time, like Brenda's, Brenda and Casey are probably the key, and Julie, the key people. Yeah, and, and sometimes, sometimes we'll make arrangements with somebody to present their budget and then something happens and they can't make it and then we have to ask somebody else to. So it okay. does, it's kind of a, a moving target. Just wondering how it went. Thank you very much. Um, I did look up uh, the general insurance, John Peresky, um, and the wastewater treatment plant is in fact charged for their property um, property and casualty insurance. Okay, good. Thanks for looking that up. Brenda, can you just say that again? They are not included in the general insurance. They have their own or they are included? They, they're included in the bill, but I break that out and I charge them separately okay. for their portion of it. Okay. Any other discussion on this item? No, all right. Um, Julie Chalfant, aye. Jack Paturic? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Allison Vandervelden? Aye. John Pareski? Aye. All right, that's six zero zero. Thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for putting that up. Oh, these these virtual meetings are actually beneficial for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next budget I have is 291 5400, and that's emergency management. Um, that budget hasn't changed for the three years that we've been doing this. Uh, 2,600 of it is the stipend for the person that's the director of emergency management and then $200 is for any uh, postage or any small costs. Make a motion we approve this. Second by John Pareski for 
Emergency management account 291-5400 for $2,800. Any discussion? So this doesn't cover EMS, right? What is emergency management? Is training or something? Uh, Casey, you want to speak to what Lori, Lori does? Sure. <clears throat> the emergency management director is the staff member that's recognized as generally leading the town's response to an emergency situation. Oftentimes that is a weather event. Um, it can be a number of things. COVID response is also in there, but that person coordinates on a state, federal, regional, and local level, the response that the town has. So it, it really depends on the situation, what the person does, but that's, it's actually a recognized federal position. I, you know what, uh, in the past couple of years, she's also obtained grants for us. Uh, there have been a couple of grants. Uh, one of them was for one of our electronic signboards. Uh, yes. We added two, two more to it through the CARES program, but she did get one of those um, uh, for the town. And then I know that there's been some other uh, equipment that she's gotten through grants. Question, Jeff Upton. Is there meetings and, or conferences and or conferences that this person has to attend? There are quarterly meetings and trainings. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, Julie Chalfin, aye. John Baturk. Aye. James Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Okay, six zero zero. Okay. Um, obviously we don't have anything from the schools yet, so that's um, kind of a, a big hole right now. Um, highway, I figured we'll get to when we can have Kevin come and, and uh, okay. speak. Um, same with the Board of Health budget. I figured either Carolyn could speak to that or Dick. Uh, Senior Center is kind of still in the works. She hasn't formulated all of her budgets yet, so she's working on that. So I thought um, the Veterans District Assessment, which is 543-5400, um, that one's a, an assessment that we get from the Veterans District and we can't do anything about it. So that this year is $13,910. Make a motion to approve that. I'll second the Veterans District Assessment, account number 543-5400 for $13,910, Jeff Upton. Great. Any discussion? Will we get any detail of what they're spending the money on? You know, I um, I don't, but maybe, Casey, do you ever get anything that says what they're spending it on? Generally, it's support for veterans in various ways. They tend to not tell us that, and it may be because it's protected. Um, they do do an annual report, John, which is included in our annual report most of the time, um, <clears throat> where they tell you what, what services they provide. Okay. The report's online, I think. I'd have to find in the link, but it's on the website, the town report. I mean, I'm a vet, so I'm all for it, but I was just, just curious. And is that based on the number of vets we have living here in town as compared to what we had last year, Casey? It is. It's based on, so the assessment is one thing. Um, veterans, and hold on, let me put my glasses on, I can't see it. Um, so veterans benefits and the district assessment are two different things. The benefits are the piece that are paid directly to the vets. The assessment helps run the district, 
and provide to the pool of money that really covers more than Franklin County. I mean, it, they have veterans district clients that are other towns that are outside of the area. And Jack remembers when this was a little less consolidated years and years ago. They consolidated two different districts into one. It's now run out of the veterans office in Greenfield. And I think they've got four or five employees, at least two of whom are, two of whom are part-time. So they, they stretch their budgets as well in terms of people, resources. Thanks. Any other discussion? No. All right. Roll call. Julie Chalfin, aye. John Pachurik. Aye. Cambius. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Allison Vandervelden. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Eight, six, zero, zero. Julie, why don't we do the veterans benefits right next to it? Um, we, we certainly could. That's a, a budget that Barbara usually puts together. So I was going to wait till she came to the group, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you would like to, uh, it, I don't think, um, I don't think it would change. I don't think so. Either. The only way it changed, the only way it changes is if something happens and either we lose a vet or a vet comes into town. That's correct. Is this the real estate tax uh, cut, no. for lack of a better word? I, I don't. Get... Mm -hmm. What happens mm -hmm. is if somebody comes into town and they need money, they can go to any select board office to say that they're a veteran and they need assistance. We've paid before for rooms for motels. We've paid to help people pay their rent. We've paid to give veterans food so they could eat. And what happens is whatever we pay out, we typically get back 75% from the state of Massachusetts in our cherry sheet. Correct. So whatever we vote there, we don't spend, we don't spend, but whatever we do spend, we uh, get back typically 75% of that on our cherry sheet. And so to Jack's point, John, um, the reason that we don't get a lot of information about what what's coordinated through the district is because a lot of times this is support options that are particularly related to a veteran's um, specific needs, whether they're health related or other things. No, no, that was a different account, Casey, that I was Veterans asking. benefits is direct. But that's what I that's why they're tied together. We don't do the coordination. We've now passed that off to the district. Towns used to be responsible. Most towns are responsible to do that coordination, but Deerfield isn't big enough to really have the infrastructure to handle that. So the money gets voted and the district handles the deployment of the resources. The money itself, the 21,000 is the estimate that this the district has, has given us based on what they know we have for veterans needs. Nobody made a motion that, but Brenda didn't I, want to discuss it. Do we want to make a motion and discuss it? If we it's actually it, not. Um, let's not make a motion because it's 655 and we need to be off the, okay within five minutes. So I think we need to wrap it up there. Um, save the last couple for next time we meet, um, which, I do want to talk about just for a second. We're meeting two weeks from tonight. We had said 6 p.m., but because of this Zoom thing and the hard end at 7, um, I'm thinking about whether we can move it earlier, um, as early as, say, 4.30 p.m. Does that work for everybody? Can you just say again what time? 4.30. I can do Tuesdays, alternate Tuesdays. Jeff Upton, I can do that. John Pachurik, I just want to say, I can do it. I wouldn't be happy doing it, but I will do it. What works better for you? What time works better? 5.30, 6 o'clock. But to me, it, 
the majority rules and whatever you want to do. If you want it at 4.30, I'm willing to deal with it. Okay. Could do five if that maybe is a compromise. It gives us two hours. And I think any meeting that goes longer than two hours yeah. disintegrate. We go off the rails when we go on that long. You must be a mind reader because I was just going to say that after two hours, it's useless talking. So well, that's, that's enough. Huh? Built for two hours, and you know, it's that's a long day. So I, I'd say five to seven is it that works great for me. If, if that works for me. Anybody else? Do that. See you a second. Then okay. motion. <laughs> All righty. Um, so I think with that, we're ready for a motion to adjourn. So is it? March 2nd, 4.30? Two weeks from today, whatever that date is. Is that March 2nd? March 2nd at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock, yes. 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, okay. 1700. All right. You want a motion to adjourn? Yes, please. So moved. Second. Yeah. Second. John Pareski got it first, I think. Yep. <laughs> Julie, gotta be quicker, Jeff. I know. Jump Church. Jim Cambius. Hi. Jeff Upton. Hi. Allison Vandervelden. Hi. John Pareski. Hi. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you two weeks from today at 5 p.m. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>